everyone, this is Ayushi Gupta. Welcome to the 45th episode of Microsoft Hour of Code brought to you by Million Lights. Million Lights is a TV channel dedicated to improving the skills of people and their employability. Now let me tell you a little more about the Microsoft Hour of Code. Microsoft Hour of Code is a series of lectures, courses and talks by experts who are going to be discussing the latest Microsoft technology topics related to programming and industry forecasts that are all focused on employability. These courses are basically for people pursuing computer science. This content has been created by our partner Microsoft and today we have Christopher and John with us to help you building responsive UI with Bootstrap. Bootstrap is the most popular HTML, CSS, JavaScript framework for developing responsive UIs. This course will help you to develop good skills to create rich UIs for users and tips on building great looking applications. Now let's move towards the course. In the previous episode, we covered Bootstrap components. In this episode, we will learn page design in which we will dig deeper into designing pages using Bootstrap, including how to create forms using the different input controls made available via Bootstrap and how to best display data for your users. So let's get started. So I kind of broke, broke these conceptually. You know, groupings is grouping stuff together. Um, objects mm -hmm. is cool stuff. And then navigation is kind of getting between the cool stuff. And so navigation, we have some of the ones we'll be showing navbar, uh, breadcrumbs, and pagination. And that navbar, that is the thing up here at the top of the page. This is, um, and Christopher didn't make a huge deal out of it earlier, but you know, you have kind of the, everything's highlighting, it's got the site name and stuff. It also, when you shrink it way down, you get this kind of, mm -hmm. that cool thing, right? And that, I think that's really neat, you know, the nav bar automatically is handling that. The way it's doing that is, is kind of neat. So let's go in and take a look. This is one I'm not going to add another nav bar. I'm just going to show you where it's set up. So here I'm going into my shared layout. And you'll notice that there are two different groups of nav bars. This one is interesting here. This is icon bar. So this, uh, this thing at the top, when we shrink the page down, People will call this the hamburger menu. It looks like a pretty lousy hamburger to me. I would, and now maybe hamburgers if we could get a hamburger up in here. Yeah. Um, but so they call that they call that the hamburger. Yeah. There, there, there's your spaghetti. Yay! <laughs> oh, nice. Um, okay. So, but so the, this menu here has that kind of those three bars on top of each other. So here we've got span class equals icon bar. Just to play with that here, I think I want to try and see if this works. If I throw a few of these into my page right up here in my panel. See what, I, I'm just curious, pardon my playing here. Span class equals bar. I'm not sure where I put it or even if I should have done that. Um, okay, so, but so that that is how the nav bar works. I think it's because it is, it's contextual. So those icon bars work because they are, um, they are inside this nav bar header. That, that's why they display. Um, but the important thing here is it says data toggle collapse. And so this is, that is the collapsed view of it. And then when they're expanded, this is the content in there. So if I wanted to put in, you know, um, something in here, like say, for instance, a um, uh, no, that's not what I want. I want a that thumbs up. Uh, there it is. So I can put other stuff in there again. Just this make is, your life easier. Just do a real quick copy paste. Copy, yeah. 
Yeah, and, and, and while John's doing this in the background, that really is sort of the key here, is that you can just add in whatever you want inside of there, and will automatically show up. And um, right now, there's the action links that are there. Um, yeah. And that's something that's MVC specific, that's just generating uh, an anchor tag uh, automatically for you. Right, and right. that really is the key there. It's just generating an anchor tag. There's actually nothing special about that anchor tag, mm -hmm. um, but it's the surrounding class that's taking care of, of all of that for you. That's a really important point. So if I go in here and do inspect yep. element, we'll see that that is, it's just an LI with an anchor tag. Yep. So, you know, don't get thrown off by that other stuff. That's just an anchor tag. One important thing to show off here. So I've been kind of painting outside the lines and throwing stuff where it doesn't <laughs> always necessarily belong. Yep. One example is I just threw this glyph icon up in the header. Now there's absolutely a way to get that to work. I have an example that, that I have later. I could, for instance, if I made a button, if I put a button in the header, I think that those generally work better. But just throwing stuff around here, you notice this is not even valid HTML. A span should not be inside a UL. And so it's kind of saying, what are you doing, John? And so, um, so because of that, it's not going to work. So I, I'm just kind of pointing that out for the, you know, you can, if, if things aren't working, it may be because... You can't just throw everything everywhere right. and expect yep. it all to work. Generally, you can nest things. You can move them around. Um, but here, me just kind of throwing that in there is not is not uh, the greatest idea. And probably not uh, really that great for site design anyways to have glyph icons up there. Um, okay, so we have looked at navbar. Uh, breadcrumbs and pagination. So I'll, I'll kind of do mm -hmm. those quickly, moving along here. So breadcrumbs, those are good up at the top of the page. Um, so I'm going to go in here. Breadcrumbs is kind of the how did I get to this page and how can I get back, right? So I'm going to go in and do control KX, breadcrumb. All right. So, and, um, you know, here this is home library data. Again, of course, I can make this instead say, you know, about and contact to match. Or, you know. Okay. And so then this kind of gives that kind of how I got to this page. Okay. So that's here. This is this, and those are those links. All right. And then the one other thing here was the pagination. Pagination is actually really cool. So it's, it's generally kind of a pain in the neck to get good looking navigation inside, uh, pagination. Inside. Yeah. And that's, that's actually kind of what this section is here. I'm gonna get rid of that. And I'm going to take advantage of something in Visual Studio where I can just group that. So there I hit, the, hit that plus minus. And I'm just going to select that whole block and delete it. And now I'm going to put in some real pagination. So I'll go bootstrap, and then it's way down towards the bottom. Okay. So there is an example of pagination. Um, and so um, it, including things like the first one, I can't go left, and so that's disabled. I'm not allowed to go before page one, right? Right. And so this is something that your server side code is going to need to keep up to date, or JavaScript, as I get to page two and three, et cetera, right. whether or not that should be active. And, and, it, and it's worth noting here, um, just you know, kind of one more time, and it's been something that I've said a lot, which yeah. is at the end of the day, it's just adding and removing classes. That's, that's mm -hmm. all that we're doing here. So if you did want to do this with a single page app, that all you need to do is just make sure that the JavaScript is adding or removing the appropriate classes, and away it goes from there. Yep. I'm going to throw that there. I'm going to go down here and get rid of this other junk at the bottom of the page. One thing that I do want to show off with this, which is cool, is notice as I go over this, because it's disabled, that's actually giving me the disabled icon, which is kind of neat. So, um, and that's, that's just built in on the browser because it's marked as disabled. Okay, so uh, uh, in wrapping up kind of, we, we've gone through, we've looked at a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. I want to show one other kind of demo that, that I put together earlier, which this was kind of just like, yeah, we're just throwing a lot of stuff together, or it may have felt that way. I also have another one where I, um, kind of assembled these a bit more. And so this one uh, has some navigation. I'm going to be including this in the code, code uh, samples as well. 
what I did for this is I, I created on my home controller, I created views for groupings objects in nav. And then within each of these, you'll see if I go in, uh, here's my groupings. So I've got you know, a jumbotron, I've got um, panels and all that stuff. Um, and so if I run that, then you'll see, you know, as we kind of navigate through them, you'll see those examples there. And it's a little bit easier kind of to get around through those. So there's label, there's a panel, jumbotron, so there's that. Objects, I've got my glyph icons. So that's actually the one that threw me off a little bit because if I look at my objects, that's exactly what I did there. So I'm going to be digging into that <laughs> mysterious calendar. You know, what's funny is, um, is while you were doing that, um, and, and in fact, why, why don't you update your objects real quick just to update one of those to calendar. Um, yeah. but, um, uh, but it worked just fine on my system. A couple of people were wondering if maybe um, um, it was a, a version of, uh, of Bootstrap issue, if maybe you were out of date. But it looked like, at least earlier, you know what? Yeah, there's there your calendar. There That's it funny. It was just on that page. OK. Who can know? Weird. Yep. Actually, I'll try and dig into it. It, it was just one of those you know, live demo things. It worked just go. fine on mine. It was really funny. <laughs> anyway. OK, so there, yep. there we have. And then, then here's the navigation, you know, breadcrumbs, navbar. This is interesting, too, on this navbar. Here's an example of, of a button working there. So you know, it can work. And actually, for that one, I did. There's a snippet in here that will insert a, no, I don't, if I go into nav. So this is how a button up there should work. If I go toggle navigation, um, no. There is a button somewhere in this list, um, and so that's that's an example of how how that should work. Mm -hmm. uh, there it is, search. Um, so there's actually an entire form up there, and then a button button default inside a form up in the navbar. Yep. Okay, so so kind of you know wrapping things up there. So what we we did there was a whirlwind tour of yes. components. I wanted to give you an, an idea of there is a wide variety of components. Mm -hmm. There is a huge amount if you go and look. Um, if, if we can go back to my browser here real quick, I want to show uh, if we go to components, there are support for a lot of things, including like media objects. So you can do these kind of complex um, nested um, media types. There is support for components for things like um, you know wells. So wells putting something inside something else. As I showed, progress bars, um, animated progress bars, which, you know, that kind of um, pinstripe thing going. Um, there's, um, you know, a lot of groups. Within, within media objects, there are also things for, um, uh, you know, as I mentioned, the, the grouping things. One other thing that kind of fits in with this is, um, that there's also support for images. And so that I think you'll see actually more on, on CSS, but I kind of think of these as parts, is there's also a lot of kind of um, classes that work well with components is these, these um, different image classes. Um, okay, so huge amount of components. Uh, we've looked at kind of the common pattern here of pulling them together, really just grabbing the HTML and putting it in. I recommend this uh, bootstrap template pack for using them. Yep. And then the one thing, the one kind of glaring omission here is we have only looked at HTML up to this point. So, you know, so, some of the um, supposition is you know how to write your server side code and you're going to be putting things into this. Uh, we saw that one example here where we're using um, HTML uh, action link in order to create the, that, some of that HTML. Um, so, you know, here's where I'm going in and I'm actually rendering some of this out. We'll look more at generating some of that server-side content, but again, really here it's HTML and classes lighting up these different components. Absolutely. Yep. Great. All right. Let's take a break there. Yes, let's do that. So just like John said, that was a fantastic whirlwind tour through everything. Um, loving everything in the chat window here, doing our absolute best to try and get through every, uh, yeah. every question as we can. Um, obviously, you know, we're, we're doing a lot of other work here. Um, but in the meantime, I don't know about everybody else, um, but uh, definitely uh, could use about a 10 minute break. So yeah. what do you say we, uh, we do that? We'll see you guys back here in uh, 10 minutes and we'll talk about laying out your pages and start to answer those questions around grids. So we'll see you then.
Welcome back. Welcome back. Last session before our lunch or your whatever it is, your, your, your lunch your, break. Your meal break. Uh, your meal this break. is uh, building responsive UI with uh, with Bootstrap. Uh, and alongside John Galloway, uh, I'm still uh, Christopher Harrison. You sure are. All right. So before you dig into, and this is a very. I, and I was ready to get started. I know. You're going to just It's a very deep session. Called. There's a lot yes. to it. I don't want to hold up too much. Yep. I did want to answer a few questions. So if we can go to my screen real quick. Uh, first of all, the code is going to be here. This is our live code as we're right. working on it during the day. As Christopher's talking, I'm going to be uploading what I just did in the last session. Yep. So, you know, be patient. We're trying to get you the code as quick as we can, but this it's not pre-staged. This is this live is stuff. This is live, live, live. Yep. yep. Secondly, I, uh, a few people have asked about this bootstrap snippet pack. We both love it. I want to praise Eric Ledbetsimer. I hope I'm saying your name right. He's the guy who wrote it. So this is not a Microsoft product. This is a Visual Studio extension. Um, you can go out and create your own Visual Studio extensions. That's what Eric did. We are thankful to him for doing it. Um, he also published the source code, which is a really cool thing. So all his stuff is out here and uh, explains it. Yep. Um, so there's that. We had several people in the previous session say, you know, Glyph Icons is neat, but we like Font Awesome better. So I'm going to try and mention that later in the day, um, but it's true. There are some great icon fonts out there, and Font Awesome is definitely a very popular one. Yep. Um, so, you know, so there's that. And they have also Bootstrap Cheat Sheets to make it easier to integrate in. Uh, finally, somebody asked about how to do hover dropdowns. So generally not the best idea to do on mobile because it's pretty hard to hover on mobile. Um, <laughs> That's probably my biggest peeve is the number of times that I will grab my phone and touch on it and it doesn't work because it's, it's, it's expecting a, exactly. a hover. Exactly, yep. Yeah. But, but if you want to do that, here's an example. So I have gone on to Bootsnip. And part of the reason I'm doing this is just to show here's an example of how you can find this kind of stuff. So here I've gone, I search for hover search for featured, you know, hover, um, and so there it is. So there's a bunch of them on here. And so here I just picked the first one. And what's nice here is then you can see here's the HTML, and you can see how people are implementing this kind of stuff. Yep. Take different themes and all that. So I just wanted to kind of, very common questions, yep. I wanted to knock those out. Let's listen to you talk about Actually, let's not. Okay. Uh, only because I, I, I just want to mention one last thing here, yeah. um, which is right along those lines. And, and I, I just want to say it because um, um, it, it'll probably come up, which is there are different events for touch versus click. Um, and so if you are looking to implement that, and, and some already have, and you probably have seen them, uh, that if you on a desktop, you have a mouse, you hover, it will then show that down. If you're on a uh, device and you tap on it, then it uh, will bring down the uh, the hover menu. The reason for that is because JavaScript will send different events, uh, depending on the browser, of course, uh, for a touch rather than for a uh, for a click. So you can use that to differentiate. So it is right. possible to make it sort of dual state, if you will, make it uh, work in um, uh, on uh, on phones. And and by the way, um, if if for nobody else on the planet, just do it for me. Please, <laughs> thank you. All right. In any event, let's uh, get rocking and rolling with uh, module three here: uh, page design. Now. There's been a lot of questions, a lot of questions, really all revolving around one thing, and that is the, uh, the grid. Now, if you're anything like me, and I know I am, chances are when you came into Bootstrap, you kind of looked at that grid and you played around with it and you couldn't quite put your head around exactly what was going on. And if you go take a look at Get Bootstrap, they do, I think, a pretty decent job of explaining exactly what it is that uh, the grids are going to do, what all the different columns are going to do, and so forth. And I hope to kind of walk through a set of demos here that will help drive the rest of this home. So that way, as you're looking to lay out your pages, you're going to be able to figure out exactly what, uh, what needs to be done. Now, over the course of the demos that uh, that I'm going to be doing here, this is sort of the page that I want to simulate here. Um, and it's sort of going back to uh, John's old um, 
MVC, uh, yeah, uh, where he goes in and sets up a, uh, a little music store. Um, and so, uh, in theory, uh, a banner up top. I'm not going to worry too much about the banner um, because John did that earlier mm -hmm. uh, with uh, with the nav and with the jumbotron. Uh, so what I'm going to focus in on instead is going to be this bottom part right here, and that's going to be where all of our grids are. So what I'm going to do is take a look at how to set up our cover art over here, and then set up over here our uh, little title artist and, and a bit of bio information there. I'm then going to have over here on the left hand side uh, our expert review and then over here on the right hand side I'm going to set up all of our, uh, our tracks and you're going to notice here that I'm going to set that up on essentially a separate grid and this is going to be all the demos that I'm going to be walking through and I'm going to walk through it kind of step by step. Now, if we're going to lay out our page, we need to understand how all of this is going to, uh, to work. And for starters, keep in mind that Bootstrap does its layout on a grid. So again, that grid is going to give you that table style there. I just realized that my head is cutting off the top of my table, but that's okay. Um, there's, there's my little table there. Um, but it's going to give you a, uh, a table style. And what you have the ability to do is identify what data it is that you want to go into those virtual cells. And you have the ability to indicate that you want something to take up a certain number of cells. So again, and it's, it's a similar concept, so if you think in terms of a table, you're pointed in the right direction, but, and this is key and this is a very good thing, we're not using tables. We really do want to get away from using tables for layouts. I know it's an old habit that a lot of us have. Um, I had it for a very long time, but it is a habit that we want to break. The next thing is our grid has 12 columns. 12. Always 12. Now, what's nice about this is that it allows you to really just kind of focus on the rough sizing without having to worry about specifics, without having to break it down pixel by pixel how big I want things. Because quite frequently, that's not what we're overly concerned about. We're worried about really relative space, and in particular, relative space compared to other items that happen to be on the page. So this frees us up from having to focus in on, well, I want it to be 300 pixels. Well, not really. I just want it to be three times as big as something else over here. And so instead of thinking in terms of pixels, I just think in terms of columns. In you addition... Know, if I can jump in just a second, that answer is something somebody asked earlier, you know, is how, something about responsive and how well does mm -hmm. this work on retina and all that. Yep. And, and you know, that's, that's a great thing is that by going instead by um, uh, percentages rather than mm -hmm. absolute pixels, lot better for working across different DPI and devices. And one other thing, uh, you mentioned 12, and people may be saying, why 12? That's kind of weird. If you think about it, 12 is a great number. Divisible by two, divisible by three, divisible by four. Mm -hmm. Those are most of the time what you're gonna be splitting into, and so it actually works pretty well there. Absolutely, absolutely. Yep. So, um, so yeah, so we got 12 columns. Um, now, here's where things, I think, start to get a little bit more interesting which is there are actually four grids that each of the four screen sizes defined by Bootstrap gets its own grid. There's a grid for large screens, which are going to be 1,200 um, uh, pixels or higher, for medium screens, for small screens, aka tablets, and for extra small, aka phones. So you get four separate grids. Now, what this gives you the ability to do is to choose how you want to target your data. So for example, and I'm just going to kick back a, a slide here and let me erase all the ink that's, uh, that's on there. Um, let's say, for example, that on a phone that I decided, you know what, I don't want the cover art here. So I just want to go ahead and get rid of that. Or maybe what I want to do is I want to slide all of that over to the other side. Or maybe I want uh, this block here to take up more space than it typically does on a smaller screen. I can go in and do that. So I can say, all right, when you're displaying on a large device, take up this many columns. When you're displaying on a medium, take up this many 
when you're displaying on a small or an extra small, take up however many it is that's going to be appropriate for the data that you're looking to present. Or to maybe kind of visualize it even a bit better, here is our bootstrap grids. So up at the very top, there's my large grid, and I get to identify how I want things to be drawn out on there. Down below is my medium grid, so I get to define how I want things on there. I've got my small grid, so I can go ahead and really kind of break down exactly based on screen size, I want to be able to serve up that data. That again, if I go back a couple of slides, you know, when we're talking about potentially a fair amount of data, some of it's going to be very important and some of it's going to be less important. And as we all know, we want to put the important information up at the very top, but the less important information down below. And by being able to resize things, by being able to move things around, that's going to make all of that possible. And again, I don't need to think in terms of tables. I don't need to think in terms of pixels. All I have to do is just simply say, hey, when we're on this side, I want it to be placed here and I want it to take up this many columns. So it makes it just that much easier to deal with it. Now, a lot of people have asked about, well, what in the world does that call MD mean? Well, I'm glad you asked. Remember, in case we haven't driven this home enough yet, so much of this is based on classes. So we have um, all these different classes that allow us to identify the size. And what's nice is the fact that there's consistency here. You're going to notice a pattern. And the pattern is going to be that the first thing is going to be call, which is short for column. Hey, hey. <laughs> the next is going to be two characters that's going to identify the screen size that we want to target. And then finally, how big we want it to be. So call-lg-6 is going to apply to large 1,200 pixels, and it's going to take up six columns. If I said large MD4, that would apply to our medium screens, and it will take up four columns. And then finally, last but not least, is our call SM12, and that's going to apply to our small screens. And again, in that particular case, that would uh, take up 12, row, or 12 columns. It would be the entire row. Mm -hmm. Now, this goes back to the slide that we saw earlier this morning or afternoon or evening, I guess, depending on the time zone that, uh, that you happen to be in. I always love um, seeing different people comment that they're watching from, um, you know, India or England or Bangladesh. wherever. Yeah, yeah, wherever it is that they happen to be around the world. I always, I always enjoy that. Um, in any event, um, this, I think, does a really good job of breaking down how big everything is going to be. Now, one little thing that I do want to highlight here is the container width, um, because we've already seen that class of container. And you're going to notice that on um, small screens, it's going to be 750. On medium screens, it's going to be 970. And on large screens, it's going to be 1170. So you'll notice there'll be a little bit of white space on each side just to make sure that it displays plays correctly there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, let's go back in, take one more look here at our uh, little site design, and you're going to notice that uh, there is our, uh, our cover art. There is our little spot with our uh, title, artist, and, uh, and bio. Let's go in and uh, take a look at uh, doing that. Now, um, bear with me because um, this is probably going to push me around, and I also need to go grab a file real quick. I actually threw this together um, earlier, so I just want to go. There we go. Let me make sure. Actually, I already downloaded them. I think I did. Doo -doo 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 -doo. I've got a lot of windows up. There we go. <laughs> Images. Um, OK, so let's do this. All right, so while um, we were at break, one of the things that I did inside of Visual Studio is I created a brand new empty HTML project. Now, one of the things that I always like to do is just get it down to brass tacks. Just get it down to its barest essentials here. So this is 100% just an empty HTML project. So I'm not going to do MVC here. I'm not going to do web forms. I really have nothing that's pre-built all set and ready to go for me. So I'm going to have to do all of this completely from scratch. Now, I am going to drag in my images so that way I have them. And I'm going to add in the NuGet package for Bootstrap. So I'm just going to real quick right click, manage NuGet packages, and let's go to online, and we'll just do a real quick search for Bootstrap. 
Chugga, 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 chugga. This is great because we had people asking about mm -hmm. this. How do we, and this is also a good answer for people who are saying, can I use this with Visual Studio 2012 or even 2010, right? right? Yep. And because this is NuGet, yes, you can. You can pull this into anywhere. It's just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Exactly. And another thing, if I can jump in super quick, Please. is people might think, why would I use NuGet to install, you know, why would I use a package manager to install JavaScript, and yep. CSS, and HTML? And, and uh, the reason is because of these updates. So it makes it very easy. You can update a package. It'll notify you when a new package is available. Right click, yep. update package, boom. And that's it. Yeah. Um, now, the last little thing to, uh, to mention here, and this is one of those things about working in NuGet, is that a lot of people will update, uh, upload different things into NuGet. And a lot of times, um, I find people get confused about exactly which one it is that, uh, that they should uh, go grab. I have a very simple philosophy when it comes to this, is just grab the one up at the very top. Um, because nine <laughs> times out of ten, that's the one that you want. Um, and so, and and this is a perfect example of that. Is that this one right here, the one that actually, you know, coming from uh, from Twitter, there is flagged as copyright 2012 Twitter. You're going to notice that's version three, mm -hmm. and we want version 3.2. Yeah, and you also do have that download count. Which is handy yeah. also. Yeah. And the updated date. Those exactly. Yeah, the chances are the more that it's been downloaded, the more popular it is. Up. It's probably the one that you want. Yep. Yep, absolutely. Okay. So what I'm going to do is simply click Install. And while this is doing its thing in the background, this is another great advantage to NuGet, is that unlike just making a reference, it has the ability to add additional files and make changes to your project, which just adding in a reference can't do. And then finally, last but not least, if I click on Updates here, this will show me any updates that might be available. So if I wanted to use um, jQuery 2.1.1, and you know what? Let's, let's live on the edge here. Let's just go ahead and grab it. Then it's very easy for me to go in and update all of that. So it just makes life easier for me. OK. Now, let me uh, go in and just create a brand new add an HTML page here. And I'm going to give this a title of uh, album details. Details. And I'm going to hit OK. And now, let's go grab the couple of files that, uh, that we're going to need. So I'm just going to go under uh, my uh, content here. And I'm going to want the, um, ah, I'm going to want my bootstrap min. And we'll just put that right there. Perfect. And I'm going to want my bootstrap theme. Just go ahead and grab that. And then a real quick Control-K, Control-D to have it reformat the document, put everything back together again. And then down at the very bottom here, I need two scripts. I need my uh, jQuery script. Just going to drag and drop that. And I'm going to need my Bootstrap script, and I'm going to drag and drop that. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that if you are using MVC, MVC will automatically do that. It will bundle everything for you and, and kind of make your life that much easier. The last thing that I do want to mention, however, for my Visual Studio peeps out there, is I'm going to add in a brand new script here, uh, just JavaScript file. And I'm going to give this a name of underscore references. And I'm going to hit OK. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag out the Bootstrap and the jQuery files into the References file. Yep. What that will do is that will give you full IntelliSense for, or you know, uh, as 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 good as it can be with JavaScript. Um, it will give you IntelliSense for those JavaScript files. Mm -hmm. So if you're ever in there and you're trying to figure out, well, why isn't this giving me IntelliSense? That's all that you need to do. Add in underscore references under scripts, and then just drag and drop out the script files into there. Very easy. Yep. Okay. So now, let's go in and start to set everything up here. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this um, uh, just from scratch here. So I'm just going to say div and class equals row. That again, think in terms of a table, that all of our columns are going to be contained inside of rows. I'm going to want uh, my image. So I'm just going to say IMG. And while we're on Visual Studio things, if you see that little piece of paper, and that little pair of scissors there, what that's trying to indicate to you is that this is also a snippet. So if you see that and you go tab, tab, 
it'll automatically expand that out for you. So we'll go in and say tab tab, and I'm going to say forward slash images. Whoops. Dang it. That gets me every time. Forward slash uh, images. And then I want my album. And then on the alt text, I'm going to say um, album. There we go. And then I'm just going to add on my class. And I'm going to say call uh, MD and two. Perfect. And now let me go ahead and fire up my page. And you'll notice that it's up in the uh, upper left there. There is my little album. Now you're also going to notice that it's not giving me any white space mm -hmm. there or there. The reason for that is I didn't put it into a container. Now, what are the little challenges um, that people sometimes find with Bootstrap? is they're constantly having to put a div tag around whatever the content actually is. Visual Studio offers you a great way to do this. Control K, Control S for surround. Yeah. And then I can go HTML, and I can go div, and hit enter, and poof, now there's a div tag. Now the only real catch here is, and this is both a boon and a bane, both a good thing and a bad thing. The nice part about this is not every tag that you might be looking for is contained inside of there. Mm -hmm. So fortunately, you could just go in and retitle that to be whatever it is that you might want. So maybe I want an anchor, and you'll notice that if I escape out of that, it'll automatically update the anchor down at the very bottom. Mm -hmm. That's good news. The bad news, however, is that sometimes you'll go in and you'll say class equals and whatever you, you want your, your class to be, I really don't care. And then you hit escape. And you'll notice that it will automatically update the closing tag with that as well. So what I try to just keep into the habit of, if I just want the div tag, is just again, control A, uh, K, control S, HTML, div, hit enter, and then just hit escape. Yes. And then if you hit escape, now it's unlinked it. Yep. And so now you can go in and say class equals, and I'll go in and say container, hit save, hit refresh, and now you'll notice that it's pushed over to, uh, to the side. I still have the white space up top. I really should throw in a jumbotron, but again, I'm going to try and keep this uh, a bit simpler. So now let's go in and let's add in our uh, content here. So we'll just go ahead and say div, and we'll say class equals call uh, md and 10. Beautiful. And then let's go ahead and say uh, H2 and uh, band name, uh, whoever it is that they happen to, uh, or actually, um, let's go um, album name. There we go. And um, H3, um, this will be the band name, and I'm going to say um, uh, 45 RPM uh, spacers for anybody who um, gets the, the reference there. Again, yet another age <laughs> test right. there. Um, but in any event, we'll go ahead and do that, and then uh, we'll just go ahead and put in a basic little paragraph. Uh, the uh, band uh, formed uh, when they were uh, young, um, as, they, as uh, time went on, they got older. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> It'll work. And so now there is my uh, next little spot. And again, I just want to highlight, because we'll come to about there, that there is my, uh, there's my container, and it would take up all 10. So if I went in and maybe put it in um, some, uh, some basic text, and you know what? Let's uh, just go ahead and do it. Uh, bacon ipsum. There we go. There's my ipsum lorem generator. Yep. Bacon ipsum. <laughs> Gotta love it. Go. There we go. Give me bacon. All right. And let's just go ahead and grab that, and then we'll just throw that in there. Beautiful. OK. So now let's come back over here, hit refresh again, and now you're going to notice that it's taking up my, uh, my space. Now what you're also going to notice is that when I go in to resize things, it's automatically going to collapse everything for me into a single column. The reason for that is it's making the move from desktop to tablet. When it's making the move from desktop to tablet, or basically from MD to SM, from medium to small, it's assuming that you've got, well, a smaller screen space. So chances are you're not going to have a whole lot of extra width there. So let's just go ahead and stack things one on top of another.
So if you want to maintain that spacing there, if you want to maintain those columns, or maybe go in and tweak them, you'll also need to add in the classes for small as well. So we'll just go in and say SM and two. And uh, I really didn't need to highlight that. And then we'll just go ahead and say call SM and let's go ahead and say 10. Mm -hmm. And now let's again save. Let's go in and hit refresh again. And now what you're going to notice is that as I resize it, it's now maintaining that size. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't do that when we get down to extra small. So let's just go in and say XS and XS, hit save, come back over, hit refresh. Now you're going to notice Two columns, 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 regardless of how big the screen is. So the point that I really want to highlight here is if you're only going to set two sizes, set MD, that will cover your desktops. Set XS, that will cover your handheld devices, including tablets. So if you're going to do nothing else, if you just want your handheld devices to look one way and you want your desktops to look another way, MD and access. Cool. Great. All right. You had that look on your face like you were going to say something. Uh, there's a few questions coming in. I was, I was wondering, Josh had an interesting question here. He said, uh, how do you handle if you want to split a single row into multiple rows for mobile? So say you added call access 12 to all your cells to make them full width. And then you're going to have a row that takes up more than 12 cells. Yeah, there's a handful of different ways that, uh, that you can play with that. One of the, um, uh, one of the advantages, and, and some people will look at it and just look at it as a, as a frustration, mm -hmm. um, but one of the advantages to having that 12 columns um, is if you go past 12, what Bootstrap is going to do is just put that right on to the next row. Mm -hmm. So if that's what you were looking to do, that maybe I had column, 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 and maybe what I wanted to do instead, and it's going to be easier, I think, if I just draw this real quick. Um, so let's say that you know here's my, here's my space, and I originally had um, something here. I had something here and I had something here. But what I wanted on a smaller device was to maybe have it go like this, where I've got something here, something here, and then full space down below. A very easy way that you could do that is set these two to be six each, and then set the bottom one to be 12. And I could actually demo that here real briefly. Um, and keep in mind, that you know, we could stay here all day and just demo different things. Um, let me just get some more um, bacon ipsum here. Um, I just want a little bit of text. There we go. Um, and uh, boom, perfect. Okay. Mm -hmm. And let's go in and say um, call um, MD. Um, it would probably help if I put a class on that. Class <laughs> equals details, details. Um, call MD, and I have two, I have eight, I have two. And then I could also say call um, SM, or XS rather, and say 12. OK. So now let's just go back over here, um, hit refresh. So now you'll notice it's off on the far right-hand side there. That's the data that I just added. Let me go ahead and shrink that down, shrink that down. And now you're going to notice it's down there at the very bottom. You know, or maybe if you wanted to do that the other way, um, then what you could do, let's just make the album take up the entire top, is that I could go in and set that to be 12, and then come back over here, and let's say 8, and then let's say um, 2. And again, hit save, um, come back, hit refresh. Now you're going to notice there's my album up at the very top, huge album. And then scroll on down, and then there's the uh, brand new two columns down at the very bottom there. So there's there's a lot of different ways that, uh, that you could go in and do that. Yeah. And you know, that that answers a question we've had here also is what um, two, two related questions. One is, can I add multiple grid, you know, XS and LG and yep. MD to one element? And yeah, definitely. And that's... That's exactly what you're showing. So you're defining on one element multiple grid classes. Yep. The other question is, what if I don't define a grid? So if I only define medium, what happens on small or large? Mm -hmm. And so then that's going to show that's going to create a new column for that one. So a single, a full, um, a full rows. Excuse yep. me for that. Exactly. Exactly. Perfect. Okay. Um, let me go back to my slides here. There we go. Okay. Now, 
this has been another big question that's come through on the chat window, which is how do I get multiple rows? How do I get um, you know nested grids? Mm -hmm. Well, here's what's awesome: is to a certain extent, Bootstrap doesn't care what you do. Here's the rule: we'll make it very simple. Every row has 12 columns. Period. Mm -hmm. That's it. So let's actually just take a look at it. So I want Visual Studio. All right, let's go ahead and create a brand new row here. Uh, let's make sure I put it in my container. That's probably going to help. OK, so we'll go ahead and say um, div um, class equals row. Boom. And then let's go in and say um, div, and we'll say class equals um, call md, and let's say, oh, I don't know, four. That's probably going to look good. Um, call um, xs uh, four. There we go. And um, let's say h2 um, expert uh, review. So you can tell it's an expert review because it tells you that right there. And then let me go get some bacon. Uh, bacon, <laughs> bacon, bacon. Ah, I closed out bacon. Oh, wait. Nope, I had it right over there. All right, let me go get some bacon. There we go. All right, perfect. Bacon, bacon, bacon. <laughs> it's bacon! <laughs> All right. Um, it's getting closer to uh, a meal time here. You're, yeah. Um, HTML div. There we go. Um, KS HTML div. Okay, cool. So there's uh, my little spot for my um, expert review. And now what I want to do is I want to display the tracks that are inside of there. So let's go in and say div um, class equals, and we'll go ahead and say call md and 8, and call um, md and 8. There we go. And then uh, h2, and this is going to be our tracks. And then inside of here, I want my tracks to display. Now, if you remember, the way that I want my tracks to uh, display is I want the title and I want the time. And I want the title and I want the time. That sounds like a perfect job for columns. Yep. So what I can do is I can just create div class equals row. Just create a brand new row. It, it, this is funny. You're answering questions as they're coming in. People are asking, <laughs> can I nest things? Or what if I want more, more than you know, 12 and all that kind of stuff? So there you go. Excellent. So just like that. So there is my, uh, my brand new row. Um, let me go in and uh, now simply say um, uh, div and we'll say class equals call md and let's say uh, six is probably going to be good. And we'll say track uh, one. Um, and then we'll go ahead and say div. And we'll say class equals. And we'll say call um, md. And I'm going to keep it a little bit shorter there. I'm not going to take up all the space mm -hmm. just um, uh, because I don't think it's going to look really good. Um, uh, but it was a great song and it ran too long. So we had to cut it down to 305. Again, Obscure reference, purely for my own entertainment, um, <laughs> to, and then um, we'll say 605. Okay. So now, let me just go in, hit save. Um, where is my little um, album? Whoops, that wasn't it. Um, there we go. There's my little album. And did I hit save? I did. There we go. Just had to hit refresh. Perfect. So now what you're going to notice here, and I'll probably tweak everything now that I'm sort of seeing it here, um, but over here is our little expert review. Over here is our tracks. And as I mentioned, each one of these is now its own separate row, and each row has 12 columns. So I'm able to identify how it is that I want to lay everything out very easily there. And by the way, while we're here, let's also talk a little bit about positioning a bit. That maybe what I want to do is I want to push this over a little bit to the right. I can do that very easily by utilizing offset. So let's just go in and we'll say call um, MD um, offset. And let's say offset and two. Just like that. And now I'm going to need to make sure that I update this because I'm going to miss two columns. Yep. I'm already using four from before. So doing some real quick math, that's going to give us six. 
this time around. So now we'll go ahead, hit refresh, and now you're gonna notice that's pushed over a bit more uh, to the right side, giving me that, uh, that bit of white space there. And again, you could go in and, and keep playing around with this. I'm not in any way, shape, or form gonna argue that this is the best design ever, but I think it does at least sort of point us down the right path of how we might visualize data and how we can start to use all, uh, all of this. Right, and again, because you're not doing this via tables, it's pretty flexible. Exactly. Like you can go in and you can tweak these, I wanna move this, want this to take up half the size and all that. You, this would take you forever to change later if it was in a table. Absolutely. So let me actually kick back to slides here just to kind of use that uh, to... You may have noticed this. Some, uh, you have call MD8 twice. Did you already catch that? May oh, I have call MD twice. Um, yeah. There we go. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> See, we're really cooking on this show. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So with that, this all leads us perfect into um, controlling placement. So again, um, with our offset, what we can do is just simply say, well, we want to skip a couple of columns. So here's our table out here. Our offset is just simply going to say skip two columns. Mm -hmm. Very simple. You're also going to notice pull and push. What pull is going to give us the ability to do is to typically target something over there, pull it back. What push is going to do is typically have something here and push it out because we're not using tables here. Yeah. We're laying everything out in div tags. And what's going to happen is it's going to go top to bottom and left to right, which is perfect. Again, this is the benefits of a table with the benefits of a float. Exactly. So I can push and pull things, I can swap left and right, you never do that in a table. Exactly. Because let's say that, you know, this works just fine on a big device. Mm -hmm. My expert review here, my tracks here. But one of the things that we've highlighted is when we're on a smaller device, we want to make sure that we highlight the important stuff. Now, if I'm just looking up information on an album, which is going to be more important, the review or the track data? Probably the track data. So what I'm going to want to have happen is I'm going to want to have, again, on a smaller device, my tracks take up a full 12, and I'm going to want my expert review, and this is going to be the key, to slide in down below. That's what I want to have happen. So the end result here is I want, whoops, the end result here is I want, on a single column for small devices, is I want my track info to be displayed there, and I want my review to be displayed there. That's what I want. That's what I'm looking for. Now, if I go back to Visual Studio here, what you're going to notice is I can very easily push things down. Now, one of the things that we already highlighted, we did this demo earlier, is I could just say XS12 and XS12. And remember that when you go beyond 12, 12 plus 12 is 24 for those of you scoring at home. When you go beyond 12, what Bootstrap is going to do is just simply go to the next row, go to the next row, go to the next row. Yep. So when I bring this up, and I shrink this down, sure enough, it went to the next row. So my expert review is here, my tracks are here. Now, this is a bit of a problem for me because I really want this down here. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not the order that I put it into. So what I wanna do is I wanna push pull things around. So let's go in and let's say that for our expert review, I want to push that down. So I'm going to say call XS push, and let's say 12. Push that down. And for my tracks, I want to pull that up. So call XS push, 
and 12. Now, I'm gonna try and do my best to keep all of my classes clean here. Um, you're gonna notice that as time goes on, I'm gonna struggle a little bit with this. And this is gonna be one of the big things that John's gonna be talking about mm -hmm. later. Now, one of the biggest things that we wanna be able to do, excuse me, is we wanna try and keep all of this as clean as possible, but unfortunately, Bootstrap uses a lot of classes. With less, what we're gonna see is we can clean a lot of this up, makes our lives a lot easier. Okay, so now let me go in and hit save, hit refresh, and now you're gonna notice that everything's kind of pushed off to the right-hand side there. Yep. Not really what we wanted. No. What I find to work a lot easier, because when you start pushing and pulling 12 here, whoops, I suppose I really should do this. Um, I'm going to update that. I just noticed I, I, I had a mistake there. Um, it really wasn't what I wanted. Um, but you're going to notice, even though I did that, it's, it's still not going to fix it. I still have a problem. Mm -hmm. um, and by the way, unlike a lot of the other mistakes you're going to see me make, I did this one on purpose. <laughs> one of the little... Easy to say. <laughs> one of the little um, things that I find easier, if I'm trying to rearrange order when I get down to a smaller screen size is to put it into that order first and then push-pull for the bigger screen size. Or, in other words, let me get rid of the push-pull here. That's going to go away, and that's going to go away. Is I'm going to take my expert review, and I'm going to cut and paste that down below. Okay? So now let's come back over here, and I'm just going to hit refresh here, and I'm just going to go to big screen. Big screen. There we go. So you're going to notice expert review on the right, tracks over on the left, not really what we wanted. Mm -hmm. So now let me... I really don't, uh, um, I'm just going to... No, I'll, I'll leave. I'm going to get rid of that call. Give me one second here. I'm just going to simplify this just to make my demo work a little better. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange the order on the medium screen. And I'm going to do that by saying call MD push. And I'm going to push it over six. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say call MD pull and six. So push to the right, pull to the left. And then when I come back over and I hit refresh, now you're going to notice my review is back on the left, which is where I wanted it. My tracks are on the right, which is where I wanted it. And most importantly, when I resize it, now you're going to notice my tracks are up on the top. Yeah. Now you're also going to notice one last thing here. We may as well fix this while we're here, is that unfortunately, my tracks are now vertical. We don't have the grid there anymore. Remember that what happens automatically when you resize to that smaller screen is that it will automatically create that single column. So just get yourself into this habit. XS6 and call XS and three and oops, there we go copy by the way that's another really cool visual studio <laughs> trick um hold down alt yeah click drag now we'll do a box select for you mm -hmm. copy and then click wherever you want to paste it paste which when you're dealing with bootstrap and a bunch yeah, of classes pretty handy <sighs> That makes life a whole heck oops, of a lot easier. So I knew about the alt select for copy, but I did not know. I've been doing alt select uh -huh. for the entire column to paste it in. I didn't ah, know very nice. Yep. And by the way, while, while we're here, one other very cool thing is let's say that you had a whole bunch that were vertical like that and you wanted to go in and change it. So maybe I wanted um, this to be six and six or um, five and five, let's say. So alt select, and then if I just type five, you'll notice that they both update. Mm -hmm. Nice. So, yep. Pretty slick. Okay. All right. I'm going to kick back to slides here. And do, 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 do. That's all in this episode. I hope this tutorial was helpful. In the next episode, we will continue with page design, in which we will learn controlling visibility. And after that, we will move to another topic that is Visual Studio and ASP.NET integration. Is your mind drinking with questions, queries, or doubts? Do you wish to learn more? Then visit our website, 
www.millionlights.org and post your questions in our forums. We will be extremely happy to clear all your doubts. If you missed anything and want to re-watch it, you can download it from our website or can watch it online as well. You can also participate in our webinars, discussions with the subject experts, as well as get Microsoft certification on various courses through our website. You can also find us on Facebook by the name Million Lights, as well as on Twitter. For more such interesting tutorials on coding, app development, and building rich UIs, keep watching Microsoft Out of Code, brought to you by Million Lights. Thank you.